Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman of the Function, Chairman of the PSRA, Directors and Team, uh, Professor Tony Clayton, who is has become an integral part of, it seems, almost every area in the security sector now. Uh, other distinguished guests, participants from the private security industry, representatives here from the Ministry of National Security and the GCF. Good morning. Good morning. The private security industry has become an essential part of Jamaica's national security architecture. It is an industry that has experienced rapid growth in recent years as the security environment becomes more challenging and demanding. Today, more than 300 security companies, ranging from small operations with a few guards to large organizations with thousands of guards complement the work of the police across the island. I just did a, a little research and looked at what has happened over the last five years. At the end of 2008-2009, the 2008-9 fiscal year, we had 13,941 registered guards. By the end of the 2013-14 year, and that, I give you that because I haven't got the annual report from the PSRA yet for, for this fiscal year, which ends in March. Uh, but at the end of the 2013-14 year, so that's a five-year uh, period, we had 21,497. That's a 54% growth in the number of guards, uh, registered guards during that period. We had a similar growth in the number of companies registered. We had 212 companies, in March 2009, by March 2014, we had 332 companies. So roughly about the same growth in the number of companies, the same percentage growth at 56% um, versus the 54% growth in guards. These companies offer a service that serves to broaden the security coverage of the country in a manner that allows the police to focus on those aspects of law enforcement and security that are best handled by the state. This morning's consultation is therefore an initiative that is extremely timely and one that is to be commended. As Minister of National Security, I have been emphasizing the importance of taking a collaborative approach to addressing the security issues that face us as a nation. This approach is necessary because the security environment and the causal factors of crime all are complex um, and the issues and challenges require inputs from many sectors of society if we are to successfully address the challenges. The Private Security Regulation Authority has an important role to play as the agency mandated by the state to provide oversight to the industry. As the industry seeks to balance the competing needs of customers, owners, employees, and the general public. The industry does not operate in a vacuum. It impacts and is impacted by factors in the local environment. And in our increasingly globalized world, it is now impacted by factors external to Jamaica. This therefore requires a regulatory agency that is effective, innovative, and enlightened. It must work with the stakeholders in the industry to develop a 21st century private security industry that is viable, that is relevant and as ethical. The Jamaican public has now become accustomed to the presence of security companies and their staff in almost every type of organization and enterprise. And for the most part, appreciate their value to the society and the economy. This relative harmony should not be taken for granted. 
and industry stakeholders need to always ensure that the quality of your service preserves this respect and harmony. An effective regulatory agency is essential to providing the society with a quality assurance mechanism for the industry, which, as we see, is still in the phase of rapid growth and development. A consultation of this nature is therefore a valuable tool for promoting dialogue on issues to do with the growth and development of the industry, the welfare of the employees in the industry, the changing role and profile of the industry, and the place of the industry in the wider security architecture of the country. At the end of today, I really hope that we won't be saying that this consultation was just a talk shop where issues were merely aired, or where matters of significant importance to the sector or any stakeholder are just glossed over. Some of these issues have to do with developing an appropriate regulatory framework for this industry that is expanding and changing so rapidly. The training and certification of guards and the establishment of best practices for the industry. The mooted code of conduct is deserving of fulsome discussion and serious input from all stakeholders. If properly introduced, it can provide a level of self-regulation that would require less intrusive external oversight. The working conditions of the 20 odd thousand persons who work in the industry deserves priority attention. This is a service industry. As such, people are at the heart of its productivity. I commend the companies that provide reasonable benefits and conditions of work to their employees. But the perception in the wider public is that this is an area of significant deficiency in the industry. And I have somewhat of a first-hand experience um, of seeing where in my own constituency, um, within the last two years, I think it was in 2013, where we had an, a guard whose head was bashed open by a, I think what, what is a, a man of one sound mine or a, or a drug addict, I believe, in, in Mandeville. And this guard had been checked on the police patrol, had had to wake him up a number of times, including just a couple of hours before the incident. And we know, if we are honest, that some guards are working way too much hours. Um, it's not fair to them because it puts their lives at risk, as in this particular case. It's not fair to the customer because they're not getting the, the service that they've paid for. And it really is not representative of a progressive professional industry. And I think it's something that I hope will be squarely confronted today. I know that Professor Clayton will be addressing the issue of aligning the private security industry with the national security architecture. This is a matter of special interest to us at the ministry. We're keen to explore and identify ways in which all the entities engaged in ensuring the security and safety of our citizens and their property can work synergistically in the common interest of Jamaica. I always remind people that the Boston Marathon bombers were caught not by police surveillance, but by private security cameras, private CCTV cameras um, operating as part of the private security architecture in, um, in the city of Boston. Similarly, I recall when I was in, in the private sector in, in the financial industry, um, we contributed to the arrest of more than one criminal suspect who was caught on camera, so to speak, on our cameras, and we were able to provide important uh, intelligence or investigative leads to police who I know of, a, at least in a couple of cases, were able to, uh, to apprehend armed robbers. So, it is happening in a sort of 
ad hoc way, um, but I think if we could get a systematic um, approach to, to sharing that information, and I'm sure uh, Tony is going to talk about that in a little bit. The, ministries, the ministry rather, and its agencies hold strongly to the view that every Jamaican has a role to play in their personal security and in the security of their communities and country. This industry, with its specialized role in security, has therefore an even greater role to play. I hope that this consultation will serve to further enhance that role and contribute to the building of an industry that will help create the prosperous and lawful Jamaica that our people deserve. Thank you.